Sam, thank you. I, I'd imagine that today is a pretty big hangover for you after uh, yesterday's fireworks and covering National Signing Day. Well, I like to call it a I like to call it a, a Sam day. You know, it's anything that I want gets to go gets to happen today because I went through a couple of hurdles yesterday. But you know, it's just another just another Wednesday in February. Absolutely, Joe. Pool day here in February for you. Um, LSU pulls off Harold Perkins. You had a great write up on Perkins. You followed this recruitment. How wild did it get? How did LSU land the plane with Perkins in it yesterday? And what do you expect his impact to be in year one? Very strange recruitment. Um, you know, honestly, it's the same schools poking around the entire length of the recruitment. It was always Texas. It was always A&M. And it was always LSU. The kid from New Orleans. Family lives uptown. Other family in Mid-City. Other family in Baton Rouge. Um, always dreamt of the idea of coming back home. But, you know, Jordy, you know this. People talk about that. And then when it's time to pick your school, you know, all of a sudden you forget where you're from. You, you know, you're a Houston kid now. You're a right. Texas kid. Any way you spin it, you can find a tie. I'll tell you, Jeff Banks made a really good run at Texas, but they faded. Um, it became an LSU A&M race right toward the stretch. Um, you throw in a coaching change, and everything lined up for A&M. And obviously, in Orlando, Harold was, was ready to make a decision. I think the decommitment took everyone by surprise. Um, he had been leaning toward A&M, and, and while Texas and LSU had made runs at him, you know, committing at the Under Armour game, it seemed like a done deal. It's already January. You know, you sign in two and a half weeks. Well, then he shows up in Florida, and he, well, he wasn't even supposed to visit LSU uh, that last weekend. Wow. His family, his family got involved. He, he rescheduled. He was supposed to go to Miami. Instead, he goes to LSU. Um, the rest is history. His family got involved. You know, his uncles and aunts, all from, from Louisiana. Um, people on the roster. I mean, there's a lot of Louisiana ties, and I think that – you know, even though Brian Kelly is a new coach, they, they they made him a priority very quickly once they kind of got their foot in the ground. They got the family aspect involved. And when you land Harold Perkins, you know, it's, it's not easy to miss on Jacoby Matthews, the number one player in the state for a reason. But when you land someone like Harold Perkins in positionless football in 2022, you might as well have landed Derwin James. I've never seen an athlete wow. like Harold Perkins. Um, I've gotten to see him in person three times of the last three seasons in game action. I've never seen anyone impact the game on both sides of the ball. I think in, in three games, he has something along the lines of four and a half sacks I've seen in person, the ability to cover to the sideline, go back and keep and play free safety. You're going to the box and be an edge rusher. Um, on offense, he plays running back and receiver and scores, you know, three or four touchdowns a game. He averaged something like 20 yards to catch for first side park last year. <laughs> you, 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 you put him in the game on defense and you let him – roam, whether it's safety, right. linebacker, rush off the edge, he's going to be an absolute chaos causer for LSU. He, I mean, he's playing against Florida State, right? <laughs> I don't know how you're going to keep him off the field. Right. Um, what's cool is he's got a cool connection with a lot of the transfers that just came into LSU. They all train in New Orleans together. Um, they're also like Harold, kind of DBs. And, um, you know, Harold runs a sub four five forty. He can play safety. He can play linebacker. You know, just He's going he's gonna to play and compete for playing time very quickly. He's just too good to keep away from the field. Hell yeah. LSU, covering LSU and recruiting is Sam Spiegelman for On3 Sports. Follow him on Twitter, at Sam Spiegs. Um, what happened with Danny Lewis? How did that recruitment go? It seemed like LSU had him locked up a week and a half ago, and then it seemed like Alabama starting to trend. What, 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 what happened there? You know, honestly, Danny is um, a different kind of kid. So, you know, each, for each player, you try to find, you know, what, what is the most important factor in your recruitment? With Danny, he, he didn't give anything away. You know, one source close to him in the week leading up said he was looking at the depth chart. But if you look at LSU and you look at Alabama, neither team has a, a very intimidating depth chart at the tight end position. LSU is obviously desperate for tight ends. And after the transfer portal kind of rid Alabama dry and their other uh, Jaleel, Jaleel Skinner, a South Florida kid, ended up flip into Miami, they had a needed tight end. Um, you know, on, this, this was a, a definitely a tight race. Like you said, uh, up until Tuesday night, he hadn't told Alabama or LSU yes or no. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, it, it's a tough loss for, for, for LSU, a kid that's, you know, an hour away from the school who just was a 4A most outstanding player. The thing about Danny Lewis is, you know, he's a fantastic player. He's going to compete for playing time at Alabama, but LSU can go in the transfer portal and Mm -hmm. try to, you know, find a replacement. It's a whole new idea nowadays. You know, usually this loss would have been way more detrimental 
you know, they didn't really sign a tight end, and Danny Lewis is, you know, a shining in-state kid. But with the transfer portal, it's almost like free agency, you know. It's, you miss a really talented high school kid, and then maybe you'll find a sophomore that hasn't played it, you know, McNeese or, you know, Louisiana Tech, and he transfers to LSU. So it, it's, it's a big loss because Danny has a ton of upside, and, and tight end's a hard position to project, but he's got so many, you know, fantastic attributes. Alabama stuck in late. They, they're, they're known to do that, and they capitalize because they have some – uh, a foundation in place and LSU will get there you know you know how coaching transitions are but the staff really only had two two three weeks to recruit these guys uh Sam Spiegelman joining us here on the Jordy Collada show Jacoby Matthews yesterday afternoon was the other one that everybody was paying attention to as you said the number one player in the state of Louisiana in a very wealthy talented year and cycle here in 2022 um where did LSU lose Jacoby Matthews Great question. Uh, I think I think it, honestly the decision was was finalized on Wednesday morning. I know that there was no decision uh, even even hours before Jacoby announced his dad said he still wasn't even sure. Um, this is something that he's probably going to continue to wrestle with until he gets to College Station. It's mm. you know it's very difficult for you know Jacoby Matthews. First offer came from LSU as a freshman at Pontchartula. You know, he didn't, he didn't even know most of the schools or coaches recruiting him back then. He didn't know he was going to be a recruit. And, and Corey Raymond and Coach O did a really good job of recruiting him and Mickey Joseph early on. He has forever been an LSU lean, do not get me wrong. Mm-hmm. And up until last month, I still would not have believed that he would end up in College Station. Wow. Um, you, have to, you have to credit Jimbo Fisher um, and that staff. It's really hard when LSU wants an in-state kid to come in to Pontchartula, Louisiana, and, and pluck up five-star safety LSU with the history of recruiting DBs, especially in state. And, you know, I know you saw the Jamal Adams and Devin White comp that the LSU staff was, was trying to show to Perkins and Jacoby. And Jacoby has so many connections to that roster. You can go up and down, and, and there's a connection for Jacoby to one of those kids or one of those coaches. LSU was in a fantastic spot to close with him. Texas A&M with the number one class. Missing on Perkins, a little bit extra incentive to, to Jacoby. He thinks he can play a little bit quicker at, at Texas A&M. He thinks he can develop quicker. You know, I'm, I'm not sure you could say that, you know, LSU did anything wrong. I think you really need to credit A&M for just kind of pushing. And every time LSU would, would take a little bit of a lead, A&M just came full fire. And I think the big thing, they really convinced the parents. Hmm. Yeah. Um Sammy, what about from a standpoint uh, of LSU and the things that they had to deal with from um, the variables of what they were recruiting against, putting the staff together, dealing with the transfer portal stuff? What do you make of what they were able to put together in a, like we've said, a a pretty revolutionary year of recruiting in the state? How do you think they managed it with everything that they were dealing with? Honestly, you know, you think about when when Ed took this job from from Les Miles a couple years ago, and and that – seemed like a way more frantic time um, than this last signing period. I mean, in December, he was still able – listen, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of really great players in the state. If, you, if you're thinking about rebuilding a team or, or building up a team in a, a elite signing class, you went and you made sure Walker Howard signed. He's a legacy, a five-star quarterback. You kept Will Campbell in the class. That's a five-star offensive tackle. Um, and you know in Louisiana, offensive tackles do not grow on trees. Making sure he stayed home was essential. And then you got Quincy Wiggins five-star defensive end, in my opinion, probably the best player in the state with the highest upside, getting him in December, colossal. Listen, a lot of things did not go right yesterday, and, and you look at the class as a full, and, and yeah, there's a lot of areas of need, but you know, getting a guy like Perkins to pair with Wiggins, those are those are staple players to build a foundation around, and you hit the transfer portal so hard. These guys have, you know, guys like Greg Brooks and Joe Fusha were just playing on Saturdays in the SEC, so I know it's you know, it's hard for LSU fans to get excited when, you know, they miss on Jacoby Matthews, a five-star DB from Pontchartula. But you added, you know, so many SEC players and SEC DBs with the transfer portal. I think that given the fact that they they were still adding Coach Hankton to the staff last month, um, and they are very close to landing Caleb Douglas and then closing strong with a lot of these kids, you know, I think by this time next year, you have Frank Wilson, you have Cortez Hankton, you have Joe Sloan on this staff. People are – the, the reception of Brian Kelly has been phenomenal by, by coaches and parents and players here. It's, it's actually surprising to see how much <laughs> they've embraced Brian Kelly. Um, it, it, they got a few good players in state. They went out of state for Perkins. It, it's a, it's 
still a top 10 class. You look at the transfer portal, they, they've reinforced the roster. Um, I, and I think by this time next year, we're going to see LSU recruiting on a level that I think fans are more accustomed to, especially with the guys in state that they usually get better results on signing day. You have great relationships with these guys, and you've been covering recruiting for a while and do it as good as anybody in the business. How good is Texas A&M's class? It's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, you have to start at the quarterback position. Connor Wegman, you know, I can I can talk for hours about <laughs> about Walker Howard or Kate Klubnick, and I could do the same thing with Connor Wegman. He's a he's a steroided version up of Johnny Football. He's just every he's just a better version of Johnny Football, and he's the real deal. And when you look at A and M's roster, the biggest thing that they're missing is a quarterback. And you know, I don't know if a freshman can come in and play right away, but he's going to compete in, in a few years when he's driving the the engine. Um, they're going to be a really good football team. You know, coming into Louisiana and Baton Rouge and getting Le'Veon Moss as a speedster, um, insane. The receivers they got, Evan Stewart and Chris Marshall, you know, A&M does not have a history of throwing the ball downfield, but if you don't with Chris Marshall and Evan Stewart, then something's wrong because Evan Stewart is the fastest kid in the country and Chris Marshall might be a better receiver. You know, one of those basketball kids that just takes the football very well. Um, along the D-line, I think they signed like three tight ends that are all like, in the top 10 at the position, it, it, it's like they went in free agency with a $100, $100 million salary cap and just got every best free agent. They dominated in state. You know, coming in to get Jacoby Matthews is, is wild. Um, it, it's unprecedented. Getting Walter Nolan, getting Shamar Stewart from Florida. You know, A&M, it wasn't just dominating in state, which they did. It's going into Louisiana and Florida. And those are, you know, out-of-state teams where they have prominent programs in state and this, this class is every bit as good as the number one recruiting class in the country. Um, offensive, they, they, there's not a position that they missed after getting Jacoby Matthews. It's, it's absolutely loaded. Now it comes with expectations because, you know, Georgia has, has reeled in a lot of number one recruiting classes before this year, and finally they got over the hump and won a, a natty. The pressure is going to be on A&M very quickly when you look at all the pieces they just brought in, the roster that they have, the progress that they made them under Jimbo. But if they're not in the college football playoff, it's, it's all for naught because they have too much talent not to make it at this point. Sammy, keep up the great work, man. Love reading your work. We'll have you on again soon. If you make it down to Baton Rouge, we got to get you in studio. Sounds good, Jordy. Appreciate you, man. You got it, man. There's Sam Spiegelman checking in from On3Sports.